All right, I'm back up forward on the port side here, and uh, I'm just about ready to make this incision in the heel end of the stem here that I need to make. And uh, I've got a piece of blue tape on there that I'm gonna cut alongside. Previous to that, I had scratched a little line on here and put a pencil line in it, and when I stood up in position, I realized that I couldn't see that very well. This is kind of a new trick for me to cut alongside that tape. If I touch that tape with the saw, I'm gonna see it immediately. I've also got a little piece of wood clamped on here that's a visual aid for me so that it'll help me keep my blade nice and level. I've also moved that line up because up forward, I've knocked the floor timber bolt out up here, and that same hole that was for the floor timber bolt, I'm actually gonna use to be the very, very forward bolt that holds this piece that I'm gonna make into position. So I'm gonna take advantage of that hole and uh, I'm gonna pick up this tool here and make the incision with this tool right here. Now, it's just a grinder with a skill saw blade in it and you've seen me use it before. There's pretty much no other tool that I can tell that'll work to do this with because a skill saw, the table of the saw will get in the way of the frames and the plank up here. That isn't going to work for me in either direction. A reciprocating saw like a sawzall will just vibrate it all up. They're really not made to cut uh, like rip there, like cross cut saws. That isn't going to work. So I've shifted my saw horse into position so that I can stand up on it and lean my shoulder against the stem up forward here and stabilize myself as I make the cut. This is obviously the tool to use. Now I'm not recommending everybody else use these things, but it's, it's great for me. And I'm just about to get started, so let's get going. I've got most of that cut completed, but I stopped a little bit early, and I actually want to saw along this tape line just a little bit further right up to here, and uh, I guess it was the tension of the cut that made me stop a little early. I actually have to get there because I'm going to get past this floor timber bolt like I had told you that's going to bolt the forward end of this new piece that I make up right here, and I'm just going to pick the saw up again, insert it in the same slot, adjust it a little bit, and just draw it along another inch or so. Now I'm using a hand saw here to finish the cut off that the circular saw couldn't quite finish up in this area because it cut further forward on the port side than it did on the starboard side because the blade is round. So I'm going to saw right through that, finish it up to this point, and then I actually turn the saw 90 degrees to that and saw into it and saw that piece right off and it'll just drop right off of there. I'll have to tune this cut up a little bit with a plane afterwards, but what I'm going to do now is shift over to the keel. I've got another piece of tape right here on the keel, and uh, the only difference with this is is that I'm going to be cutting above the tape rather than below the tape, and it's the same principle, you know, it's actually hovering right out here in space, and I'm just going to cut right over the top of it. I'm going to use the very bottom of this floor timber to control the angle when I start, and from that point on, it's actually just a freehand cut. I'm going to cut it all the way up to here, and uh, a little further than I really need to cut it, and then I'm gonna switch over and nip it right off with the handsaw. When I'm cutting with this saw, it's very important to keep the level of the saw exactly the same, because as you tilt the handle up and down or twist it in any way, and misguide that saw in the cut. It starts to bind and shake and different things like that. So you can tell when you've actually got it out of adjustment and you've got to hold it in position because uh, you want it to cut nice and smooth. We've done that. It's worked out pretty nicely. I've cut the very bow end of the keel off now, or the forward end, and this cut has been completed all the way up to where we're gonna nib it in in the stem up forward. And these are the three pieces that I've removed. The first piece that I cut off was the heel end of the stem right here, and then the second piece I cut off was the forward end of the apron style keel, and this is the piece that they replaced before, 
And uh, the piece that I'm going to make is going to be one piece to replace all three of these. I'm going to call it a four-foot timber. And the first thing I'm going to do is start out by making a pattern of it, a little plywood pattern just for the profile of it. And it's going to fit up against this fit here and fit on top here. And then once I've cut the profile in the piece, then there's quite a few other things to do to it. But we're out to replace this piece. It's going to go all the way from the floor timber under the mast step all the way forward to the very bow end up here. 